Thank you so much for joining me for Real Change. Again, it is with deep regret, a saddened and burdened heart and soul that we have to, another week, be talking about this issue of crime. A situation that must change in our nation. When will it change? How are we going to change it? Are questions that we must answer, and we must answer them now as a society, and we must press our leaders to produce real answers and produce real solutions, and they are needed now. Our nation cannot continue with this issue hanging over our heads. Crime has become a culture that it seemingly we are content to absorb it as part of the Jamaican culture and bear lip service to it, which produces no change. Nothing has changed with our crime problem in the last 40 years. In the 60s, we had no crime problem. The 70s, we really didn't have a crime problem. As we moved to the end of the 70s, into the 80s, we began to see a serious crime problem that escalated to unpalatable levels by the end of the 80s and have just grown and grown and grown since then. No one, no political party, JLP, PMP, or any, have done anything of significance in the last 30 years to deal with it. So before I address the today's matter, I'm appealing again to our political leadership, and I mean all those in Parliament who have been part of the creation of what we have, that must work together to bring a solution to this culture that we have created before it swallows all of us. Beloved citizens of this country, when will the cry be, enough is enough? Bob Marley said, how many more will have to suffer? How many more will have to die before we hit the point of a seriousness of intent with the will and the courage to not just do something, but to do what is necessary to deal with this problem that it does not become the culture that we leave for the next generation. This generation of the last 40 years created it, and we must not be leaving it as an inheritance or a heritage for the next generation. We must solve it. And those in Parliament who part of the establishment, the creation, are you prepared to die and leave it the same way? Come on, this is time for action. Citizens of the nation, it is time for action. It is time for serious action. Time to cry out. Time to weep and to mourn until we see the change. We are talking about Black Lives Matter, and many of us are behind driving it. What is happening to the black lives of our citizens daily who are maliciously, brutally murdered, and it is left to continue with platitudes that are not bringing any level of change? I want to say before I again look at the issue that this we're in the political silly season, as they call it. And I hear already the, the argument is who the problem of crime. And we did this when we were in power. And we are doing this when we are in power. I'm repeating, no political party have done anything to solve the problem. They have done things about it, but they are not solutions. No solution has been presented by the political parties to date. Not that solutions are not there and have not been made known. I have stated to all governments ways this matter can be solved, but there have been no takers. Reports have been written, no takers. We continue to tinker, but not committed to solutions. This last week in the Bogue community 
of Montego Bay, where another citizen of our nation, brutally murdered by evil and wicked men carrying guns with no fear of consequences. They have no concern and love or care for others, but seek only their own self-interest. And they are parading across our country as if that's normative behavior. Is this the new normal we are prepared to live with as a society? Watch what happens here. This Mr. McPherson is on his way home, near to his home, recognize his daughter being harassed by men in vehicles that is pressing her for sexual favor. Then they sought to block her path, according to the report of the Gleaner of last Wednesday, and come out of their vehicles and is, we are told, trying to get her, order her into a vehicle. A father comes along, sees that situation, and any responsible natural father, he seeks to intervene in the interest of a crying young 23-year-old girl at the hands of evil men of an evil system created by our political system and its continuing negligence to deal with it, spineless and gutless in the laws because we have adopted that there are no consequences for, for, for it, we seem to say that this wanting is not a deterrent, that hanging is not a deterrent. What is a deterrent? Are we saying there are no deterrents? So nothing can be done, so therefore this must become normative lifestyle. Wake up politicians, wake up citizens of the country. What resulted from that situation is that the Mr. McPherson, in an attempt to intervene in his daughter being abducted to most likely be raped and possibly murdered, he was murdered by those men. Where is the outcry of a society? Citizens, you're listening to me. What have you done about it? Where is the outcry? We are crying out, like I said, for what's happening elsewhere. Where is the outcry for what's happening here? Church, where is the church? Where are my fellow church leaders? Where is the outcry? This, we should be on the streets again marching. This is the things that should put us out there. But this is injustice. It is evil. It is wicked. It is murder. This is what we ought to be making a priority to solve the problem. And we have made decades pass. And there is an anemic church that just sits quiet and not doing all that we can. Don't miss me. We have attempted little stuff. But we have the power to change it if we are serious about this issue. And so all citizens and the church should be the ones standing for justice and defending injustice wherever we see it. I ask, if we spoke on this real change a couple of weeks ago, at the wickedness that slayed a couple of our police officers, that to crime on another level. Where is the outcry again? Where are all of our citizens that when our law officers are being murdered and we still in cruise control mode? But here is an interesting thing. Within a day, those who are allegedly to have killed our police officers, the police found them and arrested them. I can only ask, I am glad for it, happy they did. But this is a week, how oh, we haven't found these. 
It raises questions. How can we find it and solve it in a day when it's the police who it's done to and yet weeks and months and months are drifting and it's happening to our common average citizen of this country in our inner cities and now in every community at every level and we just I saw I'm crying out to us citizens of the nation Let's stand, resist it now. Is this what we are going to leave for our children, for your children to inherit this and to live in this because of inept attitudes and mindsets and negative mindsets and listening to groups who speak of kinds of things which cannot solve the problem but rather only makes the problem worse. The crisis is with us now. And so therefore I am saying I do not want to hear any political leader and any platform in this electioneering talk about what they have done. If not, we will call you out because I'm saying you have done nothing that's solution oriented. You have tinkered with the system and not taking tough decisions of courage, not willing to go back to the root of where it was birthed and pluck it up from the root and deliver a nation from the captivity of crime and violence. We celebrate Emancipation Day in another day or two. We are again need to be emancipated from the entrapment of slavery. How can we be content to say we have a growing economy and yet it seems as if the evidence is there that secure, the security industry is among the fastest growing industry in the country. It is sending a message. It's not something to be proud of. It's something we should be ashamed of because what it is saying is uh, we have a runaway uncontrolled crime situation that's becoming again, I use the word, a national culture. We're not prepared to live with it anymore. It is time for action, serious action, serious dialogue. All the players must dialogue, not tinker, because it is not that many who are engaged, but are we willing to do what's necessary to let's come together Let's sit and talk it through. Let's sit and find the solutions. They are there and they are not as difficult as we are making them out to be. What is happening is that the will to do is yellow. And we need men and women and leaders who have courage and who is committed to principles above self-interest, who is committed to national development to ensure that justice, truth be ours forever. Let's cry for our nation and work to deliver it. Father of heaven, we need your help. We need your intervention of a truth in supernatural ways because men and women and our leaders are not acting. We need your help to do what is necessary, Father, that we can arrest this problem and truly make this nation a great and prosperous nation, truly to bring peace to our nation. It is not beyond us, Father in heaven, and we know that, but we cry, help us, Lord, help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's keep praying. But prayer must be backed by work and action. And fellow church leaders, I'm calling you out. Let's get out there and make some things happen. Come on, church leaders. The issue of justice and crime and violence must be top priority on our agenda. And we should not rest until we arrest it to give better and a hope for our people. It is evident that those who have the primary responsibility is unable. Then therefore we must rise as church to support those who have the responsibility and help them and pressure them as the voice for the people. We must do that now. 
business as usual cannot continue as the order of the day. God bless you.